I'm going to the Golden Bachelor premiere at a friend's house yeah. today. Are you watching it? I watched a recap of it today yeah. while I was working. It looks good. It looks really cute. I what's his name again? The Bachelor. I Jerry. His name is Jerry. Jerry. Or Gary? Jerry. Gary. 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 Yeah, Gary. yeah. Because my Gary. dad's name is Gary. And then this Gary is also from Indiana. And my dad's from Indiana. So I made a joke that my mom should watch it. And she was like, no, this looks weird. <laughs> I think her first question was, will the girls also be older? <laughs> like, they yes. are. I will say major props because there is not a woman under the age of 60. Oh, that's nice. I really thought they might throw in like a forty year old for like mm, yeah, drama. The but they they really didn't. Yeah. And I was shocked. Like every everyone's older and it was it was uh obviously I didn't watch the whole episode, but the recap I watched it also seemed like low drama, which is nice. And Is that nice? Yeah. Is that nice? Well like I think it would not be fun to watch old ladies act like high schoolers. That's fair. And I don't know if I could handle little Gary crying. I don't know if I could do it. Well, he cries in like the first episode multiple times. Oh, okay. All right. We're ready. So, be prepared. <laughs> And I'm Maddie. Welcome to Batty Breakdowns, where we hang out, have fun, and play games all the way to the end. <laughs> Today, we're going to talk about our first... Im- or, nope. No, we are not. <laughs> <laughs> we're not. We're not doing that, actually. We did first impressions. Today, we're going to talk about Starfield. We'll give you the breakdown from its creation to its critical reception, and then... We will only be taking you on a deep dive of our own experiences and opinions while playing it. Mm -hmm. And lastly, we'll close with if we recommend it, who we'd recommend it to, and last but not least, our personal rating for the game. With that, let's, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't make one up. That's different from last week. Explore the stars. We're still exploring the stars. We're still exploring the stars. (laughs) Great. (laughs) Perfect. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So, at this point, everyone knows what this game is. It's yes. uh, you're exploring space. It's a Bethesda RPG, which we kind of debated about what that genre means in the last one, which you can listen to if you didn't catch that. And it's it is <laughs> how it's made, Bridget. <laughs> Maddie, that was probably the most it- well written description that I have ever heard. <laughs> oh my god, your ring! So cute. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I'll keep Isn't going. it beautiful? It is. It's so custom. It's custom made from a local jeweler. I love it because he knows who I am as a person, and I don't want a ring that anyone else has. That's so cute. You know, custom jewelry yeah. people. That's like a thing that you you know. It was someone he he like looked it up. It's someone in Madrona. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. It's like cool. a like a local like it's like a small like local jeweler. And uh, she named it the Meridian Ring. That's so cute. I yeah. love that. And she, so DK got this ring three years ago. <laughs> oh, well. And, <laughs> <laughs> and at this point, she's moved to Connecticut. Oh, okay. But I messaged her on Instagram about the possibility of doing like a custom wedding band to, mm. to match underneath it. So, yeah. but yeah, now I get to ask. You and all my other friends who are having weddings next year, advice to help me plan my wedding for 2025. I have no advice. It's really hard and I'm behind. (laughs) Don't be as behind as I am. Done. (laughs) All of my friends are like, book your venue ASAP. Yeah. And especially if you want like a super popular time of the year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Back to regularly scheduled program. All right. Back to Starfield. (laughs) Right. <laughs> how it's made. So Bridget. For this how it's made, it was kind of interesting because I 
didn't find one specific video that was like two hours long that could explain to me everything That's because fine. it just came out. So instead, yeah. I have an amalgamation of a few articles. Um, there was one documentary-ish type of thing um, that was about 30 minutes long. So we can link that and the articles mm -hmm. as well. But all of this is kind of coming from quite a few different sources. Um, I guess to start, and we've mentioned it like a bajillion times already, but this game was made by Bethesda Game Studios. Mm -hmm. The name that you'll see most often associated with this is Todd Howard, who is the game director. He's the one who's been doing pretty much all of like the marketing and the talks and like the direct that they had earlier this year. Yeah. So that's the name that you'll see out and about. It seems like his pet project yeah it really does he said uh in one of the articles that i read he said his brother was actually born the day that neil armstrong landed on the moon <laughs> so i'm oh. like maybe this guy just like really freaking loves space i guess he loves space he loves space yeah, yeah. and um not to brag but i i think you did too maddie everybody did at xbox did get an email from todd howard congratulating everybody on the release of Starfield. All the great work. Yes. Great so clearly we're best did. friends. Clearly. We did so much work. I know. I was like, yeah, I did so much work. I mm -hmm. sat here and I typed in chat how excited I was for it. Um, but anyway, so it was made by Bethesda Game Studios. The thing that I kind of wanted to mention is people mostly know Bethesda from their huge titles, Skyrim, other Elder Scrolls titles, uh, Fallout series, all that. But... There are different studio like locations around and about. And so this mm -hmm. one was na uh, made in Maryland, in the Maryland studio. And I wanted to call out the last game, the big one that came out kind of in the same genre was Fallout 76. Mm -hmm. And I believe that was made at a separate studio. So when people talk about like, oh, XYZ game flopped. Oh, that didn't work, whatever. I think it's worth mentioning that I think different aspects and parts of the team work on different games like each time, right? And this game has been in development for a decade. And that team isn't necessarily the same team. So I thought I would just throw that out there. A couple of the things I wanted to address that I think were really popular um, discussion points on the internet when mm -hmm. Starfield was first announced are just around like the technical aspects of Starfield. So first, I think when you think of something like a big exploration game, you think of the ones that came before it. So your No Man's Skies and the, mm -hmm. uh, I know there was a couple on, I can't remember the one that's been like in development for a bajillion years and still hasn't actually released yet. Um, maybe one day I'll remember it during this podcast. But a lot of that is associated with procedural generation. And I okay. wanted to read a little bit about how they approach procedural generation because procedural generation in these games, honestly, you can tell. You know what I mean? Like, you can tell. Yeah. It's really repetitive. It's kind of boring. And in my opinion, it's just there to get people to have more things to do. But it's not like the highest quality thing. And mm. when you think about the RPGs that Bethesda has had in the past, it all feels pretty hand curated. Like, yeah, the elements around scattered around the world are all pretty duplicative. Like they exist in mm -hmm. pretty much every setting, but the actual mm -hmm. like quest lines feel pretty unique and curated. And I was curious how mm -hmm. they were going to do this when they're spouting off like, Oh, it's going to be thousands of worlds and all this kind of stuff without it feeling just kind of dumb kind of like No Man's mm. Sky does at some point. Like, I really liked No Man's Sky. It's just at some point, every single planet you land, land on, you've seen before, and it looks the same, and it does the same stuff. So the interesting thing about how they approached it, there's definitely procedural generation, but the procedural generation, it seems like it is more focused on the landscapes and less around the individual, like, settlements that you run into. And so... Got the it. devs that were being interviewed and talking through this were talking about how in Skyrim, if you remember, you'd be like walking on the road and then you'd run into people mm -hmm. on the road and there'd be like a random encounter. Imagine that, but instead of a guy in his cart or this like gang coming up, it's they've made this entire structure, including whatever storyline they've manually curated for this structure. And then they 
alongside the procedural generation, place it across the planet, like it, so that wherever you land, there can be things that you can find. And okay. it's kind of like running into people on a street, yeah. but instead you're going to a planet and you're seeing these big structures. They're not like going to every single of the thousand planets and like plopping a structure down. So it's kind of like they've mixed it together a little bit where they huh. hand built okay. these things. They curated these quests and storylines. And then the procedural generation of the worlds is kind of merged together with taking these hand placed things and using procedural generation to, uh, wrap them around the planet got it yeah so i thought that was a pretty interesting approach we can talk as we get into it if we felt like that was successful or not but that's what they tried to do here the other thing that i would mention that people talked about a lot was being locked at 30 frames per second so did you know this maddie you're making a confused face i just (laughs) you're like i just don't care (laughs) Yes, this is where I feel like maybe I am not a gamer TM. No, I, I don't I just, care. I don't know if I care. I don't care. It was, it's been a beautiful game. I have not noticed at all. I do not care. I like someone's got to show. I, maybe after this, I'll look up a YouTube video of thirty versus sixty FPS side by side or something because I just don't feel like I've ever really been like. Whoa, 60 FPS. I think, in my opinion, now this is my opinion, I am so sorry, hardcore gamers, if you feel differently, um, but I feel like higher FPS really matters during competitive shooters because the more frames per second you have, that the more makes accuracy. That more sense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for a single player game, like, I, I don't think it matters. Um, yeah. I don't know. But anyway, it, it was contentious because we're putting mm-hmm. out this game and it's supposed to be this next generation game, right? And it's 30 frames per second. And what was interesting is I found a tech breakdown that the Digital Foundry did on Starfield. So we can link that as well. And they talked a little bit about that of like, why is this locked into 30 frames per second? It can still go up to 4K, but why 30 FPS? Mm-hmm. And they talked a lot about the different techniques that they noticed within Starfield that they utilized. Um, I wrote down some examples, but I'm not an expert on this stuff. Um, so some of it, like you should go watch the video yourself. We have it like linked and uh, there's a lot of really good fun information in there. But I'll give yeah. an example, like per object, per pixel, they have motion blur. So literally per object per pixel. And then they have additional things like they have a global world lighting that exists and the different techniques that they have Im- like used in order to make this one of the prettiest Bethesda games that mm-hmm. have come out uh, actually use a CPU. Not GPU. And because it's very CPU intensive, even if you were to reduce the resolution of the image to make it smaller and not 4K, you still probably wouldn't get frames per second back because it's based on CPU, is how they described it, which I thought was interesting. I'm not a tech wizard at that kind of stuff. Even though I've played games a long time, it's just not a a part of it that's been very interesting to me. So I don't know Mm -hmm. if what they're saying is super accurate or, you know, how that feels. But they did mention that their perspective was they, based on the techniques that they use, you probably couldn't reduce Mm -hmm. down the resolution uh, and get higher frames per second. You'd be just a lower resolution at the same frames per second. Mm -hmm. Um, And so they actually thought that the decision was probably a pretty good one because they've seen some tech demos of additional games that have... um, like demoed recently that didn't lock FPS and it feels really stuttery when it goes between like 30 and 60 as it moves around. And so yeah. they were like, maybe it's a good, good decision, but I thought that was a pretty good explanation. And in my opinion, it hasn't hurt the experience at all, but I thought I'd address it because it's been talked about a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then a couple of the other things that I got from the documentary, there wasn't too many super, in-depth details just yet a lot of them felt more like marketing videos <laughs> yeah. you know what I, mean? I think i talked about that with one of the ones that we played diablo yeah, yeah. Exactly. diablos were all like marketing videos yeah exactly and so i'll mention at least a couple other things that i thought were interesting one of the docs that i watched which was the making of starfield on youtube by i think neo gamer the uh, the video game archives if i'm remembering right the 
number first before I actually get into it. Actually, the first discussion that they had at this video was about all of the people on our team know exactly what a Bethesda game studio game is. We know that we're unique and all this kind of stuff. So literally the discussion that we had last week, which is hilarious to me. And then they followed it up later in the video with Todd Howard saying, um, we've always leaned really hard into these custom stats, like based characters and all this kind of stuff, the stuff that I mentioned to you. And you said, yeah. no, so many people do that. And he responded, yeah. uh, like literally just continuing on this video is so many people do that nowadays that it can't be our unique hook anymore. We have to do more. So there we go. Wrap so it up. we were both right. We were both According right. to Todd <laughs> Howard. I love it. I love yes. it. <laughs> Validated. Right. Validated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so I thought that was funny that he just explained away the discussion we had last time which was great it was good um the couple of fun things that I had was they talked a lot about their games and how they wanted to design them to have two lives the life that the studio gives it so what they develop what um the like main story quest lines are all that kind of stuff what you get out of the box experience but then the second life of the game they said is very much so around what the players do with it and what they do with the tools that Bethesda provides. So like the modding tools that Bethesda always has. And they said like through the lifetime of a lot of their RPG games, they just see them bubble up with like a resurgence of second life each time because of the modding tools that they give people and the creativity that people have in the space when they're giving like this little Mm -hmm. playground, um, which Mm -hmm. I thought was really fun. The other thing that they talked about a lot was art direction. And I do think that the art direction here was really nice, but they talked a little bit about... beautiful. Yeah, it really was. The uh, biggest thing they talked about was they were trying to go after something that felt tactile and real within the world. So one, they didn't want it to be like the normal sterile sci-fi environment that you get a lot of the times. They were like, this is still human. You're still humans. You're still going to want posters on the wall and knickknacks on the shelf. Like, we didn't mm-hmm. suddenly lose all of those human qualities. And they wanted it to feel like you could pick up a cup and sit down and watch the sunset and watch the world go by. And it just felt like a world that you were in as a contributor to this universe. And the uh, interesting thing about, like, making it all tactile is that actually mapped its way into the design of the like actual space like suits and the ships and the environments because they were going after apparently a very hard sci-fi inspiration do you know what hard sci-fi is because I did not until I looked it up is it like based in science like really based in science yeah so apparently the difference and I'm not an expert here but the difference between like hard sci-fi and soft sci-fi is giving it like a scientific background and making sure that like your buttons are you know all buttoned up and you can actually explain the things and they wanted to go that route of like you could see the advancement of human technology like they took a snapshot of nasa and they called it like nasa punk (laughs) and they're like you took a snapshot of nasa in the 70s and then you paint this picture around how that grew into what you're seeing right now so it felt like it was real humanity it pulled all the way through and it was something that was really like, uh, like visceral. You'd have like a visceral response to. Cool. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. The other uh, few things that I'll mention is the uh, around the music. So the music itself, I think, is really, really good. And mm-hmm. I really liked the description that they gave to what they wanted the main theme to feel like. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. you see that all through the whole game, but they wanted it to be circular. They were like, we want it to feel like you are striving to go out and discover, but then you always want to come back home. And the composition itself is around like bringing you up and up Mm -hmm. and up. And then you go down, down and all the way back down to the beginning. And a lot of the main themes they said revolve around that circular nature And they really liked how that kind of mapped to the feeling that you get when you're discovering space and exploring space is you want to go out and adventure and around, but you want to like 
find a place to settle and find a place to like move forward and call home and all that kind of stuff. So I thought that was really interesting. It's always fun to figure out like how do people compose music like that? Because that's not a skill that I have. Um, and yeah. I really liked that. I like that there was this whole story yeah. around the music itself, which is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. I thought it was neat. Uh, but other than that, that's a pretty much all I found this time. Um, I'm hoping that more information comes pretty out. Pretty much. It's, in, long. it's <laughs> funny that you're like, not that much. That's and yet much. you've been talking <laughs> for 20 minutes. <laughs> not that much. There could have been more. <laughs> but I, anyway, I thought it was pretty interesting. I no, yeah, yeah, that is forward. really interesting. I love that. I want to see what their tech does for future like installments and DLC and if this is the kind of tech that can like involve. how it keeps going yeah yeah because it seems like that's they what had I'm a also couple really of interested tactics in. that were interesting but I want to see what they do next you know what I mean yeah 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 I want to see how they add to this universe for sure exactly um see how they build on it okay really quickly before we move to the uh critical reception mm-hmm my video is saying that it's already 22 gigs. That's a lot, right? Um, Probably. I'm recording on my phone, but 22 gigs sounds like a lot. It sounds like a lot. Yeah. I feel like I want to stop it. Okay. And do a different thing. Okay. All right. Are we ready? Yay. Yeah. Critical reception. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like making sure that the the um storage on this is okay okay no. technical malfunctions okay critical reception so this got an 84 on metacritic which is pretty high higher than i was expecting actually mm. but the user score was a 6.6 .6, which i think was more in line with what i was expecting whoa and i didn't know that different. i didn't yeah. check the scores until after like the very right when it released i just checked those but i haven't checked them since mm. yeah Spicy. so i mean 84 is not like insane it's not bad that's for sure. It's yeah. still good, but it's not like yeah, game of the year. Yeah. Um yeah. So uh common things that were positives were just like well-made, beautiful, common negatives were safe and boring. Mm -hmm. And I think that we'll probably talk a little bit maybe yeah. about both of those things and I yeah. don't think I'd necessarily disagree with those. And I found a Steam review that I thought was pretty funny where <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing because you reminded me of the sloth in the zoo movie. You know what I mean? I'm so just like, pulling it up. Like, I <laughs> found a review <laughs> yeah i was like pulling it up so that because i didn't copy and paste it into my doc so i was like i have this review i thought was funny but yeah i found this steam review that i thought was funny born too late to explore the earth born too soon to explore the gallery gal galaxy born just in time to be gaslit by todd <laughs> yikes jesus christ yeah. Damn. Yikes! Yikes! Born just in time to be gaslit by Todd. Yeah, but I thought that was that was pretty funny. And then yeah, that those were just it was mostly positive on Steam. I should have given that um, credit. So not overwhelmingly positive, but just mm -hmm. mostly positive. And I feel like that kind of matches with my experience with the game. Yeah, we'll talk about all it. of those things. So yeah, we'll we'll dig in. Yeah, nothing. I didn't. I don't want to go too in depth on the reception just because we'll have some of the same stuff. I think we will, and I have a lot of thoughts, which are a little sad, but I have them. They exist. <laughs> okay. Ready to deep dive? I am. So I will be really straightforward with you, Maddie, and we can decide how we want to dig into this, but I have not done very much of the main quest line, like, at all. So if we want to dig into that, I think you're going to have to give an overview for main quest line, if you've also done any of it, because... Well, I can talk. I'm about only why doing I have the main it. quest line. Oh, oh, I'm only doing it. <gasps> Interesting. I think so I have. We have I think totally I have, different things to talk about then. Yeah, I think I have three more sections left out of six or seven. 
Wow. Like I'm more than halfway through the main quest line. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, um, do we want to start with this the general stuff, like the mechanics and all that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah we can start. Yeah, there. let's do that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um. So this game very typical for mm-hmm. your like shooter RPG. I think the combat itself is way more similar to the combat in like Fallout games minus bats. Um, mm. nothing really like Skyrim at all because, you know, that was a fantasy setting. This is just guns. It's yeah. different varieties of guns. Yeah. I'm curious your thoughts and perspective on it. Cause for me, I, I feel like it took way too many bullets to kill somebody and it's way too hard to find ammo for the guns, guns that I like. So that's actually been kind of meh for me so far. Interesting. Yeah. So I'm going sniper shotgun. Oh, interesting. As my two mm-hmm. mains. A uh, sniper for long range, shotgun for close. Um, and I haven't had a ton of problems with ammo. Yeah, I've had a little bit of problems. I think my main problem was with the ammo is that it's way too complex for no fucking reason. <laughs> it really, you is. know what I mean? There's it's so like, many different why, types. Why, like, like, why is there so many different types? Just have a sniper <laughs> ammo. A pistol ammo, yeah. a laser, a- you know what I mean? Like, yeah. why is there, like, five different types of shotgun? Why yeah. is there five different types of pistol and rifle? And they're also not, like, named things that are Intuitive. easily understandable. Yeah, totally. I have no idea what any At of them mean. I just pick all At of all. them up and hope that it's for a thing that I need. Exactly. Yeah. And it's hard to make it, like, it, it makes it hard to buy something mm-hmm. because you're, like, I don't know what the fuck I'm supposed to buy. Yeah. I don't know if you have it. And it's just like, it, and there's numbers in the ammo. And I know that that's what real life ammo is like. But <laughs> maybe like, we just real. don't do that. <laughs> maybe we don't do that for a video game. <laughs> do we need that? We don't. I don't think we do. And I, I, I don't really think, think it contributes to me. Like, I have one gun that I have really liked. And I consistently can't find fucking ammo for it and so yeah. even though it's sitting there my beautiful little gun my little pistol that i'm like ready to go pew pew with i can't i can't use it and i end up using the stupid one of the ammo that i always find and that one's just okay it's kind of bad actually and so then that probably contributes to my problem of like it's so hard to kill these fucking things because all of the upper level like ammo and guns or whatever i just can't find them and it's been really frustrating also if you headshot somebody it should kill them i stand by this i swear to god if i shoot someone in the head it should not take more than one shot. if you shoot their oxygen yeah (gasps) that's such a good idea i love that i i was like i was i was going fucking big brain with yeah you are and i was like i'm gonna shoot their oxygen tank on their back nothing doesn't matter doesn't matter. No. See, that's so sad. Doesn't fucking matter. That's so sad. Yeah. Doesn't fucking matter. So I really quickly let's go over the core loop. Oh yeah, we can do that. Sure. Uh, just to give context. So the core loop of this game is we kind of talked about it, but the whole point of the game, the story, mm-hmm. is there's these artifacts that you're trying to figure out. Yeah. With this group called Constellation. And the core loop is you hear that there's another artifact in this location, you go to the location, you fight people, you get the artifact, you bring it back to the constellation base, repeat. And there's like specific missions for multiple different characters where it's like this character like has this lead. So you go with that character for that lead. This character has this location lead and you go there for, for them. And that's kind of the core loop. And so why combat matters is because every time you're going somewhere to get an artifact, you're getting in fights with people. So combat's actually a pretty big part of this game. Yeah. And you, there's times where you can persuade out of combat, but honestly, Mm. it's not that much. And that feels more like side stuff versus the main main thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And The persuasion itself, even when you can persuade, is like a little mini game almost of like gambling kind of, um, where you pick responses that have different likelihoods of. I do really like that though. I actually, I I actually like it. 
I am is that controversial? mixed on it because okay. um, I like that I have to think a little bit more than just it being math mm-hmm. based on my skill. Um, but it feels like in some instances it's really like impossible to succeed, which is maybe the point. Maybe that's just the point. Like, hey, this is a really hard thing to persuade people out of, Bridget. You tried it, but, like, good effing luck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I do like it more than just a base skill check because that's a little lamer, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it also – it yeah. So then the next thing that I guess we'll talk about really quickly to explain more is there is um, a persuasion mechanic that's part of talking to people mm-hmm. where it denotes – like, hey, you're about to enter this kind of mini game where you're trying to persuade someone to do something that you want. Yep. And typically it's to get out of combat or to have a result that you want. Yeah. Where you, Lower where, a price. Lower a price, exactly. So you enter it and then it comes up with different dialogue options with a bar at the bottom of how many points yep. you need to succeed in that persuasion Check. conversation. Yeah. And each of the dialogue options have a risk associated with it from green to red, with red being the highest risk. But red has more points that contribute to the overall point system for mm-hmm. whether it succeeds. So you can pick like a one point green, which is really safe. Like you, the person is probably going to respond well, but you only get one point and maybe you need five yeah. and you have three tries to fill up all five points. Yeah. So you have to kind of think about, okay, well, there's this green response that's one point, this yellow response that's two, or this red that's like four yeah. <laughs> or five even, like auto, pers- yeah. like you, you got it. And you, it's kind of a – whether you succeed in that is chance as well as your persuasion. Yeah. And it's kind of a mix between that. I liked it. I put only – like I only have one point in my persuasion because I, I was kept failing and I was like, why am I failing all these? And and then I was like, oh, I, I should probably put a point here to make it a little bit easier. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I kind of like it. I kind of like that it's adding some chance – to the conversation and yeah if you if it really matters you can quick save before you have the conversation so that you can just reload and try it again yeah and I will say there's been some moments that were really pleasantly surprising to me where I had learned previous information about the person and then in the persuasion check there was like a light 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 green that was like pretty much a hundred percent and it was say the line of the information that you probably shouldn't know. And it's like plus four points. And so nice. Yeah. And so that's happened a few times. And that was really pleasantly surprising because I was like, ah, OK, I read a document like a, a like an hour ago and now I get this thing. And that was fun. I like that a lot. Yeah, that is fun. Oh. Yeah. Now, what are uh, the other types stealth? of mechanics that we're working with? Stealth. So I'm doing stealth stuff. I, I know you're probably avoiding it because you're tired of stealth. No, I am in the middle of stealth. It's actually been my favorite <gasps> so far. Oh yeah. my gosh. I know. I thought, I honestly thought that you were going to be so anti-stealth because you are talking about how you're so tired of it. The stealth mechanics in this game are so different than this actual stealth game mechanics that we've seen before. Like in this one, it's a lot more about like crouch, stand at the right angle, like move slowly Mm -hmm. and you can kind of get through it Um, minus your companion who does catch attention ruins it yeah freaking ruins it I didn't figure that out until way too long I was like why are they seeing me I'm being so good right now behind this pillar and no 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 I actually have when we talk about our companions Mm -hmm. and characters I have a tip for you Um, if you're going stealth yeah so the other things that we have as options, mm-hmm. so you can pickpocket yep. as an option. I have that skill because I was a thief. That was one of the things that I picked, but yeah. I don't ever do it. Like I haven't really gotten the chance to do it. Maybe that's something that's going to pop like, up constantly. in side quests. You could just do it. To no, 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 I know. I, well, I know I can, but like... <laughs> I want it to matter. Like, if I'm going to be pickpocketing, like, I want it to be for a reason. That's fair. So I haven't 
I haven't found maybe the right quest or side quest that's going to make me utilize my pickpocketing skill, but yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I, I like that it's an option. You have outposts, which I'm not going to be able to talk about at all because it so con- deeply confused yeah. me. Okay. Yeah. No. Nope. Great. Sorry, podcast. We can't talk about outposts <laughs> Go build because your own. we're very... <laughs> so so deeply confused by the concept i was also just... deeply confused by all of the ship building stuff so i haven't done much of that i've done a little of it but not a lot oh. i exact same way like i just made my ship a prettier color i made yeah. it purple and yeah. i was like i'm gonna do that that's what i'm gonna do and i'm not gonna do anything else priorities <laughs> because this menu and honestly all menus which we'll talk about or just like yeah there's a lot i'm lost a lot yeah um what else is there uh there's research Mm -hmm. which i haven't done a ton of because you have to have a combination of resources and then you like upgrade certain things yeah there's cooking which is completely useless don't spend your time on it no never and there's uh am i missing something i think that's it um like, those I, are the big rocks. Yeah, I think those are the big it rocks. It feels. Because we talked a okay. little bit about space combat in the last episode. So I feel like that. Yeah. You know, there's. I feel like that kind of laddered into the combat yeah. a little bit. You know, yeah. 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 You have space yeah. combat. Yeah. And you have human combat. And then, um, yeah. So that I feel like that touches on the main gameplay elements that you're doing here. Yeah. You have exploration, like, like you're exploring obviously but i i don't know if i would call it a a mechanic because nothing about this game let, tell me if you disagree i don't f- i feel like exploration is actually not the purpose of this game so it, it is not rich enough to me for it to be like i'm going to go i don't feel the need to go out and explore like without there being a quest there you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I'm not, like, it feels like exploration is how you get to your quest objective. So. Not necessarily, like, a like a key aspect of the game that's, like, rewarding in and of itself. Whereas I feel like in Breath of the Wild, it is. And I know you don't like Breath of the Wild, but, like, <laughs> how Breath of the Wild, like, makes you want to go explore. Yeah. To me, that's, I, I'm not, like, I need to go explore in this game so i here is where you'll realize how i think differently we've played this i literally have only gotten three of the parts okay like three three of the mystery parts i've only gotten three of them yeah um yes yeah those um because Mm -hmm. Very soon in the main quest line, I was bored out of my fucking mind. I was like, Mm -hmm. I really don't like this. This is not fun. And I didn't want to play anymore. And I thought about it and I was like, you know, I've still never played the main quest line on Skyrim because I felt the same way. I was like, I hate this. I hate that I have to go and do all this stuff I don't want to do to these places I don't want to see. And so I decided just to stop doing it for a while and Mm -hmm. so all I've been doing is flying around to go find things and do side quests and do the big like faction uh, quest lines because to me the faction lines are the most fun when you're flying around but you're doing side quests not necessarily I like I started off my hurrah into nothingness by going back to the like original soul like solar system where earth is supposed to be and I was like, I want to see what are on the planets they said are in Earth and in our solar system. So I went and walked around Earth for probably like two hours. I would not recommend that. There is not a lot on old Earth. But I did find okay. all the resources on it. And I was like walking around to like little landmark stuff. But none of it looks like Earth. I landed in Seattle so that I could see. It just doesn't. I um, was a little yeah. disappointed about that. But then I started flying from planet to planet. And what I will say is I think going from planet to planet around the solar system without any, like, 
without any point to it, just, like, going to explore around. There were definitely things to find. Like, I did okay. find, like, random outposts. I found things that, like, you had killed a ton of scientists, and I had to go and, like, save the last one, and you could feel, yeah, like, the shootout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that kind of stuff was in places. But the, um... The more rewarding part was honestly finding all of the different factions and the different types of towns that existed. Like, yeah. um, and I'm sure we can talk about some of those, but like the faction stuff was my favorite in the other games. So I was like, I'm just going to try and find the factions here so that I can do those. Yeah. And I finally, whenever I got to that point of starting to work on the faction quests for the things that I really wanted to do is when I started. To then you started fun. to like it. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah, cool. but it took me a while. I like while. how we've approached it differently. Yeah, yeah. I see. What I'm curious about is you said, Maddie. I don't remember if you said it during the podcast or when we were talking this week, but you said that you had started to have fun eventually. At what point did you start to have fun? And what do you think made you have fun? So I was a couple. I think I was a little bit farther than you on yeah. the main quest, but. It was like I got over the hump of the first couple. I stopped being so confused by the menus. (laughs) I finally got like a little bit used to it. Yeah. And I got some good gear from a side quest, the Mantis Mm. side quest, which I don't know if you've run into that yet. Um, Mantis sounds familiar, but wait, yes. No, yes, 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 yes. The one where it's kind of like uh, Batman, but not. Yeah. Right? There's like a lair and you become the Mantis. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not really like Batman. But, but okay. I am well, like superheroes, you know? Like there's yeah. a layer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, I got yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It, there's a layer. I, I see where outfit. you went with that. There's an outfit. I see where you, you went. I see where you went with that. I do see where you went with that. Yeah, and then you get like an outfit. Yeah. yeah. So I did that pretty early on. Like I did that after like two things into the story, like the main. Yeah. Um, Because I found it, because you find it pretty early, like the discs that are talking about it or whatever yeah and so because i got some good gear like some relatively good gear Mm -hmm. um i think that helped yeah and that was also a pretty fun side quest it was like pretty creative like you're going into the lair and there's like a little puzzle and and i like it Mm -hmm. um and i think after that i started getting more into like the main quest of like finding the artifacts because i also got my first power have you gotten the first power no wait oh no because i've only done like a few of them so i don't even know that that's a mechanic that exists so no yeah (laughs) so uh there's a point where when you find like you find a temple Uh uh-huh and it's connected to the artifacts and you have this like really interesting like tiny spacey experience and then you get like imbued with powers and so you can have like different powers oh wait can can you give me an example of one of the powers so the like the first power that i got was if you press the bumpers um it creates zero g around you so everyone starts floating up so if you're like fighting you can make everyone float up and like shoot them because they're yeah floating in the air and not shooting at you yeah yeah. So is it it there like that also kind of kicked it into gear for me. And I also started having more fun because I was getting so frustrated and then DK was like, I'll just like play like next to like I'll just like be next to you while when you play next and yeah. I can help because I was just getting so frustrated with the controls of like yeah. not knowing how to do something or like not e- figuring something out with the controls specifically. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, no, it took me forever to like find all of these things. And so he helped really streamline that for me because he had oh, already done nice. that work of yeah. of finding what all the stuff was like from a controls perspective mm-hmm. that that's when I started having fun. And then I'm just trying to do the main quest and like see what the story is because I'm just curious about the story. Yeah, And I think that, that's what made me start having fun was just like getting over the initial hump Hump. and then yeah yeah I think that's a I think that makes sense I was just curious since you have taken the main quest line route how different it felt because I feel like my fun came from different things my fun was like oh I'm finally in a storyline that's really cool totally yeah totally 
Yeah, which I mean, I our actually, fun is coming from completely different stuff. Yeah, I, I guess I assume since you're far enough along in the story, have you made it to like neon yet? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's where I feel like I started to have fun was in neon because that's where all of the like faction side quests were for the like I'm a criminal and I'm sneaking around and all that kind of stuff, and that was really fun. And I was like, okay, all right, we're back because I feel like the Um, this game really nerfed the way that you can do stealth in this game like it just feels like it's super nerfed and especially because the headshot thing and so if I like kill somebody from a distance I tell everybody else and I'm like okay great um pointless so I am uh, I think with the research you can level up your gun and get like an actual silencer you can get a silencer yeah yeah and so that's what I need to go and do to continue I, st- I don't know how there. effective that will be I, I don't know I'm I'm gonna try to do the same thing put like a silencer yeah but I know Chris I know. got it and I haven't talked to him about it I just know that he tried so hard to get the silencer and he like worked on it for a couple hours and then he accidentally bought a silencer for the wrong kind of gun and so then he had to start mm. over oh it was sad. no Oh no, that was, sucks. <laughs> yeah. So pay attention when you do the silencer stuff on whether or not you're doing it for a certain type of gun that you want the silencer for, because the research yeah. is different. Yeah. 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 Can we talk about the characters for a little bit? We can. Yeah. I know that you haven't maybe done a ton with the characters yet, but I don't know if you have any like favorites. I haven't done a ton with the main characters, but I still think it'd be valid for you to talk about them and I can like do what I can for the ones that I've seen. And I Well, I just wanted to talk about my favorites. I think that sounds And good. then give you give you an idea for one if you haven't run into him. Yeah. I will you be said honest. that you were Yeah. Well, oh, dealing with the Go stealth, ahead. the the stealth people. Yeah. yeah, the um one that I have continued along on the ride was I just kept Sarah um for most of my stuff because I was like I kind of felt bad dismissing her. And I have Lynn, too. And then I have um, one other one. I can't remember. The uh, So I just kept Sarah. So I've actually gone kind of deep into her little mini storyline because I just kept her. So we can talk about it, but just know that I will be responding to the experiences that you've had. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So have you met Andresia yet? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. So, couple couple things. Character-wise, I think the characters are pretty shallow, to be honest. Like, yeah. I'm not in love with any of them. Yeah. But there's there's three main people that I really like. Okay. Uh, I love Vasco, the yeah. robot. He's fun. Yeah. You should have him be your companion on a trip because he's hilarious. Like... His robot responses to things are really funny. Like, there's one where I'm, like, losing health, and he's like, you're losing health. Recommend using med pack. And it's like, <laughs> I fucking know, Vasco. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, and that one's really fun. And then the other one that I wanted to mention is if you go to a bar in New Atlantis, you can hire someone to your crew. Uh-huh. And his name is Simon... Oh, wait, what's Simon's last name? Baker. Okay, never mind. I met a different Simon, but continue. (laughs) Uh, Simon. Sorry, let me just. Bankowski. Okay, a different Simon, different Simon. Yeah. Yeah. So you can hire him to your crew and he can be your companion. And he's one of my favorite companions. He's a sniper. Oh. And, And so he like is really valuable in combat because he'll snipe people and he's sneakier. Mm. So that's like my first recommendation for you. And the other one that happened that was really hilarious is DK was like, I've never seen another companion do this before. So he was like, he was also like thinking that it was great. But when I was doing the Mantis quest, he downed like a big dude like a fancy, like a high level dude. Uh And the dude must have had a good like mini gun. Do you know what I'm talking about? The mini gun, they're like machine guns. And it's like, (laughs) yeah. Um, Yeah. He picked it up and started using it. The rest of that quest versus his sniper. And it was just, and it was so funny because 
Like, he was originally sniping, and then throughout the rest of the quest, he was just like... <laughs> <laughs> and it was so good! And it was, like, a rare... Like, it was, like, a epic... Like, it was, like, a purple-level gun. Yeah. Uh, it was, like, a good gun. And That's awesome. it just cracked me up that he just picked it up on his own. Like, I didn't give it to him. Because DK kept asking me. He was like, did you give that to him? And I was like, I... <laughs> no! No! I didn't give it to him. He just picked it up and started using it. That's so fun. I love it. <laughs> and that. then the last one that I'll recommend for you is Andresia. She is an expert in stealth, like mm-hmm. expert. She actually like turns invisible. Oh, that's one that's been following Chris around. I've seen I've seen her. I just haven't played like I haven't found her in my game yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when you follow the main quest for a couple, you'll run into her and then she'll become an option for you. But I like her. Other than that, like I'm not super crazy about any of the characters. Just yeah. those three I really like. And then I like my little hired Simon. He doesn't have a backstory because he wasn't Yeah. He's not a main. Um which I'm a little bit disappointed that these side characters don't have that. just don't have any depth at all. Yeah. But I still think that he's funny and I like keeping him around because of that. Yeah. Mini I feel like, can you, do you know if you can increase the skills of the randos that you find? Because I found a few of them, but it the, feels like their skills are really low each time I find them. So I'm like, eh, whatever. I'm going to look it up. I haven't even thought about that. Yeah. Because I haven't found anything challenging enough for me to be like, I need to level up, you know? Well, I was mostly thinking about like, hey, if I have a limited amount of space, I'm not gonna like go pick these folks up if they're lower level than what the core ones are gonna be. So I will say that what you'll what you'll want to look for in the randos is they should have three skills versus just Just two. Yeah, okay. Like at minimum three. Yeah. And Simon does have three. He's mm-hmm. like marksman, sniper, and something else. Yeah. Andresia has, has like four. So definitely the main people are better. better. Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they don't level up. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Good to know. Yeah. The um, time that I've spent with Sarah has been interesting. I have liked her more as time has gone on. Mostly, you can because romance her. Are you gonna romance her? I've already started flirting with her. We've definitely started flirting. Well, what uh, the start of her storyline? You know, is uh, mm-hmm. did you you got the start of her storyline with like Asia? Mm-hmm. I think her name is, or I need to look that up again. Um, but I really love that the options that you have when you first start talking to her for that one is like, so you guys were in love, right? <laughs> I'm like, oh. yeah, that one is funny. <laughs> and so I feel like the more that I've gone on with her, like she opens up a mm-hmm. lot more and talks to you about serious stuff and about like um, how she's feeling her past and her past history mm-hmm. with like her old role. Like, I don't know. I just really liked that the depth kept coming because I wasn't sure. I will say though, um, and this is just a comment on companions in general, is, and I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but I feel like when the companions, um, what's the word? When the companions like talk and have words to say in the middle of a conversation with somebody else, um, yeah, it pulls the camera over to the companion and the music stops. It, the, like the active music that was in the background. So mm-hmm. it's like, do, 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 do. And then Sarah has something to say, and it'll be like, blah, 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 blah. and then it go back to the person and be like, do, 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 do. And it's really, really jarring. And also, I've gotten yeah. a few glitches where when it pans to them, the character is like facing the other direction. <laughs> Have you gotten that? No, I haven't gotten that. <laughs> oh, I've gotten that, I've very gotten that multiple though. times where, yeah, where it like pans to the side character, and I'm seeing like this. <laughs> And you're like, great. And they're like saying that. their thing. And you're like, okay. and I'm like, is that a bug? <laughs> and then there was another one with Andresia where it panned and it was like her mouth only. <laughs> and it was just like. It's a secret. She just wanted to. It was like secret. super, it was like super zoomed in. And so it was just, <laughs> and her teeth were fucking nasty because they were so poorly animated that they looked uh, like rotten. Gross. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, she's cute. Like she, her character is cute, but like. They have this, like, uncanny valley aspect to them. And when you zoom in on their mouth, it becomes really Really uncanny and, like, really weird. Yeah. 
Is there yeah. is her personality less goody goody than Sarah's? Because that is, I think, the thing that I'm looking for. I want somebody who will be okay with me doing the shit that is not legal. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. She's Perfect. like that's like her shit. Yeah, great. I feel like you sh- you need to go like yeah. I'll go back to the her. main storyline. I'll go back. Yeah. I'll get my first little power, and then I'll just be yeah. on away again. Um, and maybe one day I'll finish the quest line. It'll be right after I finish the Skyrim but maybe not. main quest line. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, maybe not. I'll finish it. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> okay, yeah. Let me know if it's worth it making it to the end. Um, I just have so much more fun with all the individual faction stuff that I was like, since I literally, Maddie, if we didn't have this podcast, I would not have played it for probably months. And then I'm sure at some point yeah. I would have picked it up and tried again. But yeah. I was really just not into it. And that was my way to get into it. It was like, okay, I'm just going to go find the stuff I know that I'm going to find or like. And I had seen uh, Chris in the club in Neon when he was playing. And I'm like, that's where I want to go. I was like, Chris, tell me where Neon is. I'm going there. And he was like, okay, it's on this planet. So I just bebopped my way over there. Um, I ran into my parents at the club. And then I was like, great, perfect. <laughs> That's so cute that you have parents. I and know. They, the club. they were really jealous, or not jealous. They were really uh, uh, nervous that I found them there, though, because, you know, it's like this drug den city. And the conversation we had was like, so you guys uh, are here in this part of town. Like, this is where you guys are at. My parents are like, oh, uh, the dad, yeah, we're just here. To- we're just drinking cocktails. And the mom goes, we are? <laughs> That feels like such a good thing to have picked. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like maybe I should have picked that. I wonder that if you fun. can. My neon street rat, like, I haven't. So I'm not, like, deep into neon. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I, I'm, like, at neon right now, actually. That's where oh, I am in oh, the main okay. quest. Yeah. And I just have different dialogue. I will say it is quite fun because it's really broody. So when you first get to to Neon and you talk to the guy and he's like, what a city, huh? It's like, to your point, it's very Batman-y where it's, um, let me look up the line because it's so funny. Um, It's like, if you like, uh, no, no, I'm just going to look it up. (laughs) Neon. (laughs) It's a good, good, I I guess, you know what, I'll. Oh, oh, Oh. here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. I'm ready. Let me give you an example of the Neon Street Rat dialogue okay. and why I thought it was hilarious. I grew up in the shadow of this tower, so it's time to see what this place is all about. Just It's like stuff like this where it's very like <laughs> Batman. Me of Bane. You're like, I was born in the dark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I merely, you've merely adopted the dark. I, I was born, born in, in it. <laughs> I was born in it. <laughs> oh my god, that voice exactly. is so good. <laughs> Down ten out of ten. <laughs> Thank you. Anyways, yeah, it was is like very. So it's been funny, but I don't know if it has like any actual implications besides yeah. just like the broody dialogue, which is fun. I think you can get rid of it later too if you don't want it. I because I think Chris got rid of his once he was done with all the neon quest lines. I know I like it. I like it. I like it. Chris wanted to give his character a story arc, so he was like, "I went through my neon street rat phase, and I I was born there, and then I went through all this stuff, and I'm leaving for a fresh start. So no more." (laughs) That's so funny. We should do. I feel like we should do wrap up. Okay, let's wrap I feel it. like we should do a summary. Yeah. Summary, th- thoughts, what you mm-hmm. liked, what you didn't like. Okay. Go for it. So to summarize how I was feeling about mm-hmm. this game, it did not capture me the way that I wanted it to. It did take a while, but I did en- end up enjoying it. I mm-hmm. don't feel like folks should feel bad if they feel like they immediately need to go off and do their own thing. Cause that's how I found my fun was doing that. I think there yeah. are definite things that I wish were different or better, but it does have some of the charm that I wanted. Like a lot of um, like the side quests that do get pretty deep. I like the comic characters that are pretty fun. And overall, I think the liveliness of the world is actually pretty good. Like you go to places and it feels like cities and there's people everywhere. Yeah. 
And so I think overall yeah. that feels really good, especially for a game that is literally thousands of planets. I think overall I will probably put it down for a while after I finish some of the quests that I'm actively on right now and maybe go back to Baldur's Gate for a little bit because I kind of miss it. I want to play that a little bit more. Yeah. And so I'll probably put it down. And I do think I'll come back to it. I think that I'll probably come back to it as more DLC, as more mod stuff kind of starts coming out. And uh, I think when I have less other stuff that I feel really antsy to get back to. Um, So overall, I I think it's like, it's not a bad game. It's just, it didn't suck me in the way that I had wanted it to. Um, Yeah. What about you, Maddie? That's totally fair. I feel the same. I feel pretty similarly where it's kind of, um, it's, it's good, but not great. Yeah. It's good, but not great. And I, I do think the combat is pretty fun. The, the skill trees have been good. Mm-hmm. You know, I like the options that you're given there. I don't love the controls, as I mentioned. Yeah. I do think it is a little shallow and not as, like, it's really rich in setting. Yeah. And it's not very rich in soul. I don't know. <laughs> It feels kind of weird to say, but do you know what I mean? You like, should be a, a, like an official reviewer because I could see that quote. I could 100% see that quote as a title of an article. 10 out of 10. Great job, Maddie. <laughs> Rich in setting, but not soul. Oh, you didn't give it a rating. What's your rating? Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I have to rate it. I'm going to give it a three out of five, and I'm going to give it a three out of five. I don't know. Planets, because I'm boring. So that's what you get. I guess I could say artifacts. I'll say artifacts, so I'm more on theme. Three out of five artifacts. There you go. Yeah, because that's how many I have right now. (laughs) Because that's how many you have, yeah. I think I have seven. Okay. Yeah. I think I have a lot. So you're giving it a seven out of five? No, no, no. Maybe not seven. Maybe I have... I, I have a lot, though. I feel like every time I play, I'm getting, like, at least two artifacts. Okay. Then you probably have more than seven. Because you no, get the first two, like, right away. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I, I'll go count. But, yeah, I have the same. I have three out of five Vascos, because Vasco's my favorite character. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I think it's good. I'll keep playing. I want to finish the story. So I have yep. that as the goal. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty close. Like, I'm... I'm not that far, I feel like. I'm not that far. And I, it's been 30 hours, I think, Mm -hmm. I've been playing. So I think it'll net out to maybe being like a 40 or 50 hour game. Yeah. Maybe 40. For just the main 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 storyline. Yeah. 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 And I've done some side quests, but not a ton. Mm -hmm. Like I... I'm being really picky about the side quests that I'm doing because I've Mm. been wanting to just, like, stick with the main. So I'm only doing side quests that really interest me. Like, I'm about to go get a job at on Neon. Have you done that? Have fun, yes. Okay. It's a fun one. If you're going to be picky, that's a good one to be picky about. So, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, Yeah. it seemed fun when I, like, went up to the terminal and it was like, do you have a criminal history? (laughs) And I said yes. And they were like, interview. (laughs) Yeah. And they were like, we'd love for you to come interview. And I was like, this is amazing. I love this. I don't know if what you answer to the job questionnaire matters. But I don't know. At least I, to me, it felt like, what am I getting into that they want to hire me? Um, it definitely involves criminal activity. It's really fun. You should do that one. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Okay, mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably the other side quest that I'll, I'll do when I play probably tonight. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, overall, good. Good. I definitely don't feel like it's been a waste of time. Like, it's been good. I guess we never said who we'd recommend it to. Did we do that? Oh, that's so true. Who would we recommend it to? Who would I recommend this to? I would recommend this to people who don't know what to play (laughs) and they want to play something let me cook. I know. Bridget. I'm sorry. It's just Let so me funny. cook. I'll just rec- if you don't know what to play, just play this. <laughs> no, if you don't know what to play and you want something that's like 
epic. Mm-hmm. And and I'll tell you where I'm going with this. I'll give an example. DK is very picky about games. Like he doesn't like certain gameplay mechanics. Okay. He doesn't like turn based. He doesn't like card based stuff. He's very picky about that kind of thing. Yeah. And so I think if you're like that and you just want to play something that's long and like comfortable, like, yeah. and this goes back to that thing that the reviewers were saying, right? Where it's really safe. Yeah. This is such standard gameplay. It's like a science almost, right? Like there's, yeah. n- that's what I mean by like not a ton of soul to it because they're not really doing anything new or interesting yeah. or different. Yeah. But it's fun because it's like Fallout and because it's like, yeah. you know what I mean? And and they they do know what that is. And it's if you don't really care about having that other stuff, which I care more about, to be yeah. quite honest, like I, I think that's kind of my recommendation. Like if you don't really care about it pushing the boundaries of gaming and you just want yeah. like a good long a game to get into. Game. Yeah. 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 I think that's I think that's good. The um opinion I was gonna give was I know that Bethesda games are a little bit like they're either your cup of tea or they're not, um, for a lot of people. And so I would say that this is a pretty standard Bethesda game. And so if you like them, then you should give it a shot. I mean it's But it's not gonna change your mind about Bethesda. It's not gonna change your yeah. mind about Bethesda. Yeah, definitely not. This isn't a like brand new fresh start where you decide that, oh my gosh, I love games like this. That's just not what this is. So I yeah. would uh, set expectations if you're one of those people. Because um, I know quite a few who've mentioned that. They're like, wow, I really wish this was X, Y, Z, other thing. And I'm like, well, that's not what this is going to be. So <laughs> like, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. Um, so I think I'd probably say that. And then um, I would say that although there is a lot to do in it, it I wouldn't necessarily say that you have to have infinite time if you want to just pick it up and play. Totally. It's the, the little quests that you can do are pretty bite-sized and you can finish like mm-hmm. a quest line pretty fast and mm-hmm. still feel like fulfilled at the end of it. So even though it is a really long and full like game that has a ton of content, I don't think it has to be like, oh God, I have to sit here and play like 300 hours to get, you know, happiness or joy out of playing the game. So I wouldn't be worried about that. Totally. Yeah. I agree completely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right, Maddie, do you want to close this out? Because Bridget doesn't have the file open. Yay. I will close this out. Yay. Also, um, for comparison, the whole rest of this time, my video is three gigs. <gasps> Wild. So, and this has been 48 minutes, and my previous one was like 22 20. minutes and 20, yeah. 20 gigs. So, Crazy. I just can't use that yeah. camera. I just can't use that camera. It would probably be good for live use my streaming. my phone camera. For live streaming, yeah, good. yeah. When we start doing that someday, <laughs> someday plans. Okay, so thank you for listening to our podcast. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and rate it. You can find us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Batty Breakdowns, and visit our website, BattyBreakdowns.com, made by Bridget. The podcast art was done by Tanisha. Vernicar, and our podcast was edited by me, Maddie Wisnat. Join us next time to hear us two baddies break down Alan Wake Remastered. <gasps> no, I already know. <laughs> and then if you're listening and you have connections, I would love for Bridget and I to get a reviewer copy of Alan Wake 2. I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to try to email the studio and see you send good emails maddie so i feel like i feel like you can do it yeah but you know if someone's listening and they're in the industry this is really long shot probably not a thing (laughs) but and they're like oh i i have a copy i could get you a copy i mean might as well please yeah please we just we really would like it so that we can come out with the episode on time Yeah, yeah yeah i think it's it's hard because we're we're doing these like even with Starfield employees only got a couple days head start like a weekend yeah. head start on it 
it like they gave us the the code on Friday and it came out Monday. So it was like we got the weekend, which is not nothing, but it wasn't insane. Yeah. And as we're like trying to keep up with the industry and the games that are coming out because all of our episodes that do better are kind of the bigger things. Yeah. It's the bigger games. Like our Last of Us episode is our most listened to one. And it's because like Last of Us show timing off. with yeah. it. Yeah. And so as we're trying to keep up with stuff, it, it would be easier if we could get like a little bit of an early copy. But I don't know. We're not yeah. probably not big enough for it, but still. <laughs> It would be. It'd, we could. That be could be a goal. With your help. Could be a goal. <laughs> yeah. With only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> only you can help us get early review copies. Amazing. <laughs> Ship it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Uh, bye. Bye.